Hi, everybody. Welcome on this Friday afternoon leading into the weekend. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, for those of you who I've not met, I'm Jen Garino, CEO and President of Isaac. Um, I think probably a lot of you were at our Shinola Hotel event and then our event at Jam Handy, which is hard to believe, was 17 months, one week, and two days ago. It seems like a lifetime ago, but welcome back. We really were looking forward to getting together in person again, but as things turned out, that wasn't gonna be possible. So we didn't wanna wait too much longer. So we decided to get together this way and have a little fun, reconnect. Uh, if we would have done what we originally planned, we would have been celebrating in person a year ago in April when we were set to open our factory. We ended up opening it differently, uh, surrounded by spun-bound poly, uh, which was all the material that we used to make PPB, PPE along with many of you. And uh, who would have thought that we would have been surrounded by hospital blue when we opened our factory uh, a year ago. Uh, a number of you on this call tonight were part of that consortium, uh, which was really, really important. Uh, we, we did a lot of important work. It was during a time where, boy, it was, it was the wild, wild west. We had to get in line with a lot of people to get the material to make gowns. We had to learn how to make them. We had to teach people how to make them. It was really uh, an unforgettable experience, I know, for us and probably for a lot of you. Um, you know, it helped us grow as a company, but more than that, it really helped us to build new relationships and then to deepen the relationships that we already had. One thing that really stands out in my mind as we look back is the amazing funders that came to our rescue during that time. Uh, thanks to those companies and organizations, they were able to support us in supporting some of you. We worked with over 15 companies that were able to stay operating during this time to make desperately needed PPE. And you're gonna actually meet some of those folks uh, tonight. One of them, uh, which is, uh, you know, one of our supporters is gonna speak to everybody tonight. So we really wanna give them a chance to chat with us and then also a, a board member of ours. But we don't wanna focus just on the past. We want to, you know, look at what kind of unlikely partnerships and unexpected things occurred over this past year and what progress occurred over the past year and how can we learn from those things as we go forward and begin to, con to continue the work that we're all doing to build a, a bright future for this industry in Detroit. We'll begin with a brief overview um, of what we've been up to, Isaac, over the last 13 months and, and what transpired after our fairly unlikely launch. And next, we'll mingle. Uh, through technology, each one of us will be randomly paired with some other folks for a quick three-minute chat. Then we'll hear from you know, what I think are superstars in our industry about the silver linings over the past year. And then finally, we'll end with another opportunity to network, and we'll hop in one of two lounge. Well, you can choose one of two lounges or go to both lounges and enjoy just chatting with um, you know, your, your colleagues, people that you have met before, people that you haven't met before. So let's just start here by briefly talking about Isaac so you all know uh, what we have been up to. Uh, first, it's amazing to say that the term people power Isaac is now a reality. Uh, uh, in four years in the making, we've since hired 20 production people to the administrative staff and hired half dozen of our country's top consultants. And all those things have helped to propel us forward and we're looking forward to uh, the year ahead. The production staff was really the backbone of our organization. We manufactured over 150,000 isolation gowns. Uh, we made over 500,000 masks. It was really a remarkable experience in terms of how hard people had to work through a time most people weren't even working. So kudos goes out to everybody that was working really hard during those times. We have since, uh, since uh, let's see, this early fall, this past fall, started to pivot back to our original plan, which is to make apparel, um, make beanies, tees, hoodies, and even some youth athletic jerseys. Despite the ban on what was, you know, really, really curtailed our in-person ability to deliver on our workforce mission, we were still able to hold two cohorts um, of students for our proprietary fundamentals of sewing and production. 
Um, shortly, you're going to meet someone who uh, took the class, and I'd like you to hear directly from her. And now, fortunately, we're back to holding those classes every 10 weeks. The next one, I think, be, begins uh, the, the end of, of June. In addition to being able to um, continue to do training despite those times, we decided we should revise some of our, our training uh, delivery and work on ways to deliver training to our own staff of uh, factory employees. And it turned into some remarkable outcomes. We learned over 250 new skills and capabilities, 16 opportunities for development of new products, 91 trainings on new products, and 35 opportunities to train on new equipment. With the help of some amazing donors, we have now turned this into a regular part of Isaac, and we have decided to reduce our production days to four days a week and one day a week. Uh, beginning at the end of this month, we will be upskilling our current staff. Uh, they will be trained on fundamental skills, and each one will have a career path of their own where they'll begin to be able to decide on some elective courses to pursue the path that they want in this industry. In many ways, you know, we have, we're sharing a, a dream together here, and we're seeing it fulfilled over a, a lot of years of hard work. Many of you have been at it for a very long time. And through the support that we're seeing, this collaboration that we're seeing, we're able to see some, some real possibilities come true. Uh, I think we're all excited about promoting responsible manufacturing, ethical manufacturing, advanced manufacturing, sustainable manufacturing, and to be a resource for reshoring responsibly and to be a resource to help grow companies that have already been here doing really good work and are ready to grow. We also look forward to being um, a place where we can pilot new technologies. We're a usage case facility as an institute. And so we are currently involved in several projects where we are trialing new technologies. We have also partnered with the state the city and great organizations like Pure Michigan Business Connect, Detroit Economic Growth Corporation, Design Corps, Detroit Regional Partnership, College for Creative Studies. All this is a part of communicating to the world that Michigan is a great place to create a new capital for American apparel manufacturing. Many of you have been doing this for a long time. You're gonna hear from one of those folks that have been doing this kind of work for a long time. She's actually a founding board member of ours. And speaking of board members, I, I would be remiss if I didn't give a huge shout out to the amazing role they have played in supporting us along a very uh, non-linear crooked path of our first year. They've been there with advice, desperate phone calls, made introduction, open doors, helped us through all the COVID craziness. It is now my personal goal to not let those collaborative spirits go away because COVID goes away. I hope we can double down on what we've learned and continue to build all the relationships we had and to grow ways that we can collaborate together for mutual success. Lastly, I don't wanna to forget to thank all of our donors. We had some that made very large gifts in the hundreds of thousands and came back to support us a second time during this past year. And those that were even willing to, you know, donate $50 and to get uh, an Isaac uh, t-shirt on Giving Tuesday, your belief in what we do uh, means a whole lot to everybody here and to what we believe is the future of this industry here. So enough about Isaac. Um, we're going to take the next 10 minutes to mingle, uh, since technology is absolutely not my gig. And Fitzpatrick is going to um, lead us through uh, what will miraculously appear as a technical mingle. So, Anne, I'm going to let you take it away from here. Bear with us, we're on a fancy new platform, so it might be a little bumpy along the way here. 
All righty. Can, can you hear me? Yes, everyone. So, all right. So now, by now, you can see to the left of your screen, there is a networking button that says now. So after I give you the instructions, you'll head over there, click on that, and then it'll ask you to join. So you'll join. And um, then you it will want you to share your audio and video, just like all the conference calls that we've been doing the video calls you need to share your audio and video and so what's going to happen is you will be randomly paired with someone else on the list who is joining also and you'll have up to three minutes to chat with this person hopefully it's a new person or maybe it's somebody you haven't seen for a long time so you'll have this opportunity to meet with them and up to three minutes once the three minutes is over you, it will exit you out of there and you will um, get to rejoin with someone else now, if you happen to finish um, before your three minutes is up, you can just leave and then join again. And uh, we should have enough time to do this three times. And uh, don't be um, upset if you aren't paired right away. Maybe we have odd numbers of people out there. So just hang tight and the system will automatically um, uh, put you with someone. When we're finished with that, we'll come back to the main stage. And you know, keep an eye on the chat. Paige, will, Paige and I will be uh, helping people get back to the main stage when we get that started uh, to hear our speakers. So go ahead and head on over to uh, networking. Have fun.